6.34, and, uh, well, it's Thursday, rolling through the week. Shocking news out of Washington, D.C. today. Majority leader in the U.S. House, Kevin McCarthy, saying that he has withdrawn his bid to become the next Speaker of the House. What's going on there? Let's talk to Debbie Georgiatis, political strategist, and uh, you can find her on Facebook, Ladies Can We Talk. Check her out on Facebook there. Also, that's the name of her, her book, too. Uh, Debbie, great having you here. Thanks for having me. Great to talk to you. I always enjoy having your thoughts on these uh, matters. Uh, how about we listen to Kevin McCarthy? Here's a brief clip of what he said uh, today. And I think there's something to be said for us to unite. We probably need a fresh face. I feel good about the decision. I don't want making voting for speaker a tough one. I don't want to go to the floor and win with 220 votes. I think the best thing for our party right now is that you have 247 votes on the floor. He feels good about the decision. Do you believe that? (laughs) Well, I think he thought he probably couldn't win it. And so, yes, he probably feels better not to have faced a vote and lost. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that's how he's really feeling. But you know what really strikes me about his statement is it's that a little bit of that um, blind, deaf, and dumb attitude or something that doesn't refl- it doesn't reflect understanding that the reason John Boehner was forced out, the reason that there is such a tussle for this, is because there really is a split in the Republican Party mm-hmm. in Washington between establishment, go along, get along type Boehners, and people who are far more conservative and part of that Freedom Caucus. So... It's going to be a battle to get one person that they all can unite behind, I think. Right. Well, but, I mean, didn't he know this, though, you know, a week or so ago? I mean, what, what, why did, he, did it suddenly occur to him that this was going to be a difficult vote? <laughs> I guess two things. He, had, he suffered a lot of backlash after his statement last week on, in an interview where he was asked, name a Republican accomplishment, and he described the Benghazi hearings having caused Hillary Clinton's numbers to go down, her polling to go down. So mm-hmm. that was viewed as an admission that this, the whole Benghazi hearing was a witch hunt. And so people, even on the establishment side, who kind of liked him, thought mm-hmm. that his performance there validated he wasn't really um, seasoned enough to handle main, the media that much. And you think um, the Republic, his colleagues, the Republicans, just saw that as, a, as an amateurish on his side? I think some of the more established ones who really otherwise would have been happy to just kind of, you know, it's his person, next person's turn, move up. Those kind of people saw that. I also think the Freedom Caucus in Congress, which is that group of Republicans who formed formally formed a Freedom Caucus, they have now said they will unite and they're and stick together. And so Mm -hmm. I think that any candidate for speaker realizes he can't get it if he can't get the Freedom Caucus behind him. To support the candidate. One last thing on him, maybe he's out of the picture, but this rumor that he uh, had apparently had an affair with a fellow uh, congresswoman there. Uh, Do you think that had any role in his decision? You know, I don't know. I'll tell you, I met last week with someone who knows Kevin McCarthy very well and told me absolutely it is not true. But that rumor has been floating around Washington for about two years. And um, he, this close friend of his, told me it's absolutely not true. Of course, I don't know what else he would say, but I I hate to think that would weigh in because it is just a rumor as far as I know. Now, uh, Representative Paul Ryan, of course, ran with Mitt Romney. Uh, he people wanted him to run. He said, uh, absolutely not. Why do you think he, he's not interested in the position? You know, you just are, you get slings and arrows. I think if you want to be a potential future presidential candidate, it might be a bad job to have a speaker because all the failures are hung around your neck, and it's just it's a very trying job. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if that's part of it, but um, yeah, it's really okay. you're saying. Do you, well, okay. So what about this Daniel Webster? Apparently, he's the one that the forty hardline conservatives support from Florida. What what kind of uh, does he have any real chance? You think? You know, I wish I knew better about him. Um, Daniel Webster is the one Freedom Caucus is behind. And um, among conservatives who kind of talk all the time online, I don't hear any big negatives about him. Mm -hmm. But the other one who announced he's running and and is still in the right race, so far as I know, is this gentleman, Jason Chavez, I believe from from Utah. Mm -hmm. And um, he, I think, he may be closer to someone who would appeal to both the conservative base and also to the more the establishment Mm. Republicans. So he he has a better chance. Um, But he's got to bring the Freedom Caucus around to seeing his 
the merits of his uh, role as speaker. I mean, considering the dynamics, do you think it really matters who the speaker actually will be? Do you think anyone's going to be able to be more effective than anyone else? I actually do. I think that, you know, it's in, in a strange way, this race for speaker kind of parallels the GOP presidential race. Mm-hmm. It's a tussle between the uh, more conservative base and the more moderate establishment GOP and trying to see who defines our party. So I think a real conservative getting it um, and, and taking the hard lines that they say they want to take on Obamacare, you actually see will we get a different result out of our um, you know, I, I, what we do in Washington, I'm negotiating with the Democrats, with the president, various issues. You would see you can get a different result. If mm-hmm. an establishment person type gets it, it'll probably be just the same as it has been. Uh, Josh Ernest, White House Press Secretary today, saying, quote, uh, Republicans should, quote, either tame the forces of that small but vocal group of extreme ideologues or buck up the mainstream or at least more mainstream majority within the House Republican conference. How, how do you think Democrats are viewing this process? Well, I have to say a little bit. They're probably kind of smiling to themselves watching the internal Republican battle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's really interesting. President Obama just announced, I think it was today or yesterday, that he essentially will not sign the defense spending spending budget um, if it doesn't essentially close down uh, Guantanamo Bay, close down Gitmo. So uh, getting at my point is the left can take, like President Obama and his ilk can take very strong positions, very, um, you know, really hard-line positions, Mm -hmm. and somehow they're allowed to do that. But when the GOP takes hard-line positions, especially when they're consistent with what they said in their campaigns, we're going to fight Obamacare, we're going to fight amnesty, uh, that's viewed as untenable. So, I mean, Josh is speaking for his boss. I didn't hear that news. Do you think that's? Do you think he'll actually stand by that? The president will actually uh, will block this defense spending bill without Guantanamo being closed. So he says. Uh-huh. White House press secretary. I mean, yeah, Josh Ernest t- talked about it today. Yep. Yeah. What's um? Okay. So what's happening now? Because uh, the clock is ticking down. How how much of a uh, a rush is this going to be to get somebody to to take the position, the speaker position? Well, I think that John Boehner said he would stay through the 30th, which is a Friday, and so they have three weeks from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I think there'll be a lot of internal negotiations. The Freedom Caucus will be members will be pressed to drop their their commitment to be united, and they'll be and they in turn will be working with some of the more established Republicans, saying, "Come on, we've got to try to make change here." So Mm -hmm. I think it could drag out for a long time. I mean, I I think it'll end before the 30th. I don't think they'll let it just go, but. Yeah. I think there'll be there'll be some long, big discussions, late at night discussions on Capitol Hill. Well, I know there's there's talk about the issue of funding Planned Parenthood. Do you foresee, depending on the speaker that's chosen, a, a government shutdown coming out of this? Oh my gosh! Well, I suppose it's possible. Um, and again, a lot of this has to do back to the President Obama point has to do with messaging, like you were just saying, and I know, Mike, exactly why you said it, because what everyone's saying is, well, will Republicans shut down the government over funding, over refusing to fund Planned Parenthood? But Mm -hmm. the other way to say it is, will the president shut down the government because he won't sign a bill unless we continue funding funding Planned Parenthood's conduct? Mm -hmm. But it's a messaging battle we don't do well. You know, so yeah, I mean, I think some in GOP would say, this is worth the fight and we better message it better. Do you think we will see a shutdown then whoever ends up being i guess um uh-huh. yeah, i have I'd say if i had to bet my if i was a betting person which i'm not i would say no i don't think we'll get to a shutdown over that yeah and boehner he's uh do you think he's just breathing a sigh of relief at this point <laughs> he's probably spending more time in his tanning bed no i shouldn't yeah. say that he is probably relieved honestly it's a very stressful job and and, and thankless in many ways if you unless you have a super majority and you can get everything done you want which he doesn't have enough to do that. He can't override vetoes of the president, just Republicans, so he has to work with the Democrats. It's been a long tenure and very, it's exhausting, I'm sure. So I think he's honestly probably relieved. Debbie Georgianis, political strategist. Find her on Facebook, Ladies Can We Talk? That is the name of her book, and find her on Facebook under that also, Ladies Can We Talk? Debbie Georgianis. Debbie, thanks. Mike, thanks for having me.